الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين وبعده Welcome to the Ramadan Refresher uh, It's our daily reminder uh, before iftar and uh, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our fast and our uh, salah and our recitation of the Quran and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this a blessed month for all of us hope all of you guys are keeping uh, well and uh, staying safe and uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, ease our predicament in these difficult days so we're moving on to a new section which is Babu Fadli Ta'jeel Al-Fitri Wa Ma Yufthiru Alayhi Wa Ma Yaquluhu Ba'da Al-Iftar This is a new section on um, the the merit of uh, opening the fast uh, as soon as Maghrib falls, as soon as the sun sets and what uh, a person uh, is recommended to open their fast with and what a person should say after iftar. So the first hadith عن سهل بن سعد رضي الله عنه أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال لا يزال الناس بخير ما عجلوا الفطر متفق عليه collected by Bukhari and Muslim uh, from or on the authority of سعد بن سهل بن سعد رضي الله عنه that Allah's Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم says that the people or Muslims will be in a in good in a state of good as long as they uh, open their fast early meaning early as soon as Maghrib uh, falls Maghrib time falls meaning not to push it uh, later than uh, the, the first moment of Al Maghrib and what this basically means because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants ease for us and doesn't want hardship and um, so there is good fiqh there is a good uh, there's good wisdom behind behind this this hadith so we are recommended as we mentioned uh, in the previous episode that the Prophet وسلم, advised that we delay our pre-dawn meal, suhoor, until the until like before Fajr. Uh, and this should make the fast easy for us. And here he recommends that we open our fast as long as the time is right for iftar, which is Maghrib, as long as, long as the time of Maghrib enters. Uh, this is also ease for us. And there's another reason here. There are people who so humans, generally speaking, we humans, we have a tendency to sometimes to go to extremes. So we wanna, so we wanna be, uh, uh, we wanna resort to precaution more than prescribed. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala specified a time for us to stop eating, which is Fajr, and He specified a specific time for us to open our fast, which is Maghrib. That's what we should do. But sometimes people wanna again uh, resort to precaution and they say no I just want to be on the safe side so I'm gonna stop eating before Fajr like a little bit before Fajr just in case and uh, we want to wait until when Maghrib falls we want to wait a little bit so that we are safe this is extra to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prescribed for us and somebody might see there's no harm in a little bit maybe 15 minutes before 15 minutes after it's not a big deal we say it's not about the 15 minutes but it's about obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's Allah who sets the terms here and we are supposed to just follow that and not make things easy for us because Allah advises in the Quran a few times especially when he refers to previous nations like the Christians that people take extra people put an obligation upon themselves something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not prescribe for them why because they want to go the extra mile but then humans won't be able to maintain that for for the most part for majority of them won't be able to maintain that so if someone wants to go to extra the extra mile you can go the extra mile with voluntary acts of worship that are already prescribed like the kind of that or the type of that has already been prescribed like qiyamul layl do more fine it's an open area of uh, voluntary acts of worship extra acts of worship you want to do you want to fast more then fast more days after Ramadan you volunteer but do not make them an obligation because an obligation here becomes a legislation so for the fast there is a specific time to start the fast and a specific time to end the fast you stick by those you don't go beyond that why because if you start with these little things sometimes with good intention 
you end up changing their religion. So that's why the Prophet ﷺ says that people or the Muslims will stay, will remain in good state for as long as they uh, open their fast as soon as Maghrib falls, meaning they don't delay it. Why? Because that shows they still uh, observe the limits and the rights of Allah and they comply with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them and they do not uh, place upon themselves a burden that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not place upon them. The second hadith one عن أبي عطية قال دخلت أنا ومسروق على عائشة رضي الله عنها فقال لها مسروق رجلان من أصحاب محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم كلاهما لا يألو عن الخير أحدهما يعجل المغرب والإفطار والآخر يؤخر المغرب والإفطار فقالت من يعجل المغرب والإفطار قال عبد الله يعني ابن مسعود فقالت هكذا كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يصنع رواه مسلم قوله لا يألو أي لا يقصر في الخير Okay, so this is uh, two people Abu Atiyya and these are from Attabi'een and Masruq They entered to ask Aisha رضي الله عنها the wife of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم So Masruq asks her and he says there are two men among the companions of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم all of them are so keen to do what is good. One of them opens their his fast as soon as Maghrib enters. And the other one delays his iftar way after Maghrib. So she said she asked, who opens their fast as soon as Maghrib enters? Uh, Masruq said it's Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu. So Aisha radiallahu anha she said, This is how the Prophet used to do it. So this was the way of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Somebody might say, so the other one is a companion and he used to delay. And now we, his name is not mentioned, the other one. His name is not mentioned. Uh, he's a companion and there should be no harm doing that. We say, well, what we have is to follow the way of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now, why a companion would do something different? There are many reasons. Sometimes maybe that companion did not know about this specific sunnah. Or maybe this companion um, made ishtihad and this ishtihad is not necessarily correct as long as it is not in line with the way of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and there could be many other reasons but what we have to do is follow the example of our Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasallam The third hadith وعن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال الله عز وجل أحب عبادي إلي أعجلهم فطرا رواه الترمذي وقال حديث حسن. Alright, so this is uh, reported by Tirmidhi and he said it's a hadith Hasan, a good hadith. Uh, on the authority of Abu Hurairah رضي الله عنه, he said that Allah's Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم said that Allah عز وجل said that Allah سبحانه وتعالى said so hadith Qudusi. The most beloved of among my servants to me are the ones who open their fast as soon as Maghrib enters. وعن عمر ابن الخطاب رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا أقبل الليل منها هنا وأدبر النهار منها هنا وغربت الشمس فقد أفطر الصائم متفق عليه. Collected by Bukhari and Muslim. On the authority of Umar ibn Khattab رضي الله عنه. He said, Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, when the night comes from here, and pointing here to the east, meaning when the darkness comes in, in the horizon. And when the night starts leaving on the west, the horizon, western horizon, and the sun sits, meaning it, it goes down be, below the horizon, it's not seen anymore. فَقَدْ أَفْطَرَ الصائم. This is the time for the fasting person to open their fast. This is more, in more detail. What is the time for the person to open their fast? وعن أبي إبراهيم عبد الله ابن أبي أوفا رضي الله عنهما قال سرنا مع رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وهو صائم فلما غربت الشمس قال لبعض القوم يا فلان انزل فجدح لنا فقال يا رسول الله لو أمسيت قال انزل فجدح لنا قال إن عليك نهارا قال انزل فجدح لنا 
قال فنزل فجدح لهم فشرب رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ثم قال إذا رأيتم الليل قد أقبل منها هنا فقد أفطر الصائم وأشار بيده قبل المشرق متفق عليه قوله اجدح بجيم ثم دال ثم حاء مهملتين أي اخلط السويق بالماء So this is from uh, Abdullah ibn Abi Awfa radiyallahu anhuma uh, He said that we were traveling with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he was fasting They were fasting And the sun uh, It was sunset, the, the sun went down it disappeared be, 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 it disappeared in the horizon it is it could no no more be seen uh, so the prophet sallam said to one man uh, go and prepare some food for us some iftar for us so the man said oh messenger of allah maybe you should wait till it gets a little bit dark the prophet sallam said unmount your uh, camel maybe right and prepare the food for us uh, the man said, it's still bright. The Prophet ﷺ said, prepare some food for us. So the man prepared some food and the Prophet ﷺ, and it's basically, it's uh, this is mixing some type of uh, food with, 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 the, uh, with water. And that what basically is just preparing some sort of a, like a soup or some soft kind of a smoothie kind of thing for them to to drink to open their fast with so the pro as soon as the man prepared that the prophet وسلم, drank and then the messenger وسلم, says if you see that darkness the night has come from here and he points to the east uh, then uh, this is the time for the fasting person to open their fast again this is about the same uh, meaning it's basically when the sun sets and um, you see the darkness coming from the eastern side, then even if there is some brightness in the horizon, then especially in the western horizon, then still it is the time actually for iftar because this is Maghrib already. وعن سلمان بن عامر الضبي الصحابي رضي الله عنه عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال إذا أفطر أحدكم فليفطر على تمر فإن لم يجد فليفطر على ماء فإنه طهور So this is from Salman ibn Amir al-Dabbi رضي الله عنه that, Allah's, that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said when one of you opens their fast then open your fast with dates if a person doesn't find dates then the person can open their fast with water because the water is pure and this is collected by uh, Abu Dawood and the Tirmidhi uh, now this is not for obligation this is a recommendation so it's recommended to open the fast with dates because it's sugar sugary and it brings the uh, it's easy, easy it doesn't like it's easily digested so it's not heavy for the system or water if not but again this is a recommendation a person can open their fast if they want with whatever they want as long as it's not something that's going to strain their system وعن انس رضي الله عنه قال كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يفطر قبل ان يصلي على رطبات فان لم تكن رطبات فتميرات فان لم تكن تميرات حسا حسوات من ماء رواه ابو داود والترمذي وقال حديث حسن again collected by abu dawood and the tirmidhi from anas رضي الله عنه the servant of the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم or the personal assistant he said allah's messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم when he opened his fast he would usually open his fast with fresh dates the fresher ones that are not the older ones that are get dry but the very very fresh one fresh ones uh, and if he couldn't find those, he would eat dates. These are the older dates, the dry ones that we have. These, these, are, one, these are the ones that are mostly available in the market now. They're, they're dried, they're like dried fruits, right? Uh, and if not, if he couldn't find that, then he would take some sips of water. So this is about the time to open the fast and the recommendation for what to open our fast with. And here we can move on to a new section. Which is Babu Amr al-Sa'imi bi hifdi lisanihi wa jawadihihi an al-mukhalafati wal mushatamati wa nahwiha. And this is a section on command to the uh, fasting person to uh, preserve their tongue and their limbs 
from falling into any sin or any kind of argument. And Abu Hurairah radiyallahu anhu قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا كان يوم إذا كان يوم صوم أحدكم فلا يرفث ولا يصخب فإن سبه أحد أو قاتله فليقل إني صائم متفق عليه. Collected by the Bukhari and Muslim on the authority of, on the authority of Abu Hurairah radiyallahu anhu Allah's Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم said when it's the day that one of you is fasting let this person not engage in any kind of idle talk or evil speech or mention anything that is bad. And if a person picks up a fight with this fasting person or argues with them or insults them, let this fasting person say that I am fasting. And we mentioned previously that the person could say it straight to the other person or they could remind themselves with it that I am a fasting person. Because fasting again is, a, is basically not limited to the physical abstinence of food and drink and desires, but it's also a spiritual absence of... Uh, 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 a spiritual, sorry, a, a spiritual a, a abstention. It's an abstention from uh, all types of evil where the person aligns themselves more with the spiritual side of who they are. They are more with, aligned with their heart than they are with their mind and their, their, their ego. So a person would not engage because a fasting person is supposed to be in the purest state of a human being. And this is something that cannot be done by uh, sheer willpower. But it's again, it's an experience. It's a state of being where the person is aligned with obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they sort of transcend their physical and uh, I would say mental or ego nature. They would transcend that. And here we have another hadith um, collected by Bukhari. وعنه قال قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم من لم يدع قول الزور والعمل به فليس لله حاجة في أن يدع طعامه وشرابه. رواه البخاري. Collected by Bukhari from Abu Huraira رضي الله عنه that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said whoever does not leave falsehood and false testimony in speech and and, and in action so. There is no need that this person leaves their uh, food and drink for the sake of Allah. Again, this does not uh, uh, make it halal for the person not to fast, but uh, it basically says that the person is losing all, all of their reward. This is what it means. Because again, fasting is not merely physical abstinence. It's actually, it's way more than that. It's a state of alignment. It's a person becomes more, more in line with their soul, the pure side of them, where their fitra is. So, and the person, this is where they, they, their, their behavior originates, for, originates from the pure side of them. And it's more the angelic side of them. So it's not only merely abstinence, it's a complete abstinence from every evil. Why? Because when the person is aligned with that element of themselves, they, they, they can't go down to a level where they engage in anything that is bad or evil. And this is why the Prophet ﷺ is saying that a person who does not abstain from engaging in falsehood, whether in speech or action, then this person basically, they're not getting anything from their fast. They're not, because they're not really fasting. And this is why some of the early scholars we mentioned previously that they held the opinion that if a person engages in falsehood or in backbiting for example they actually they have broken their fast completely it doesn't count at all but again we said still the fast is an obligation on this person and basically what that means they could act, they could potentially lose all of the reward we have a new section here and this is called babun fi masail min sawm and these are issues that pertain to sawm and these are fiqhi issues عن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال إذا نسي أحدكم فأكل أو شرب فليتم صومه فإنما أطعمه الله وسقاه متفق عليه This hadith is collected by Bukhari and Muslim, and Muslim from Abu Hurairah رضي الله عنه that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said if one of you is fasting and they forget they happen to eat forgetfully they eat by mistake they eat or drink the person should carry on fasting and their fast counts. It's valid. No problem. No issue with that. It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has uh, fed this person or given them drink. 
So if a person forgets and they happen to eat during their, uh, the, the day of their fasting, then as soon as they remember, they should stop and they carry on fasting. Their fast is valid and there's no harm on them. And this applies, by the way, to the obligatory fast, which is Ramadan, and it applies to even voluntary fast outside of Ramadan. وعن لقيط ابن صبرة رضي الله عنه قال قلت يا رسول الله أخبرني عن الوضوء قال أسبغ الوضوء وخل بين الأصابع وبالغ في الاستنشاق إلا أن تكون صائما رواه أبو داود والترمذي وقال حديث حسن صحيح This is collected by Abu Dawood and Tirmidhi عن لقيط ابن صبرة He said I asked Allah's Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم about wudu The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said you wash the limbs of wudu uh, and you even uh, rub or let the water run uh, between your fingers and toes and you exaggerate uh, rinsing the rinsing of your nose your mouth and nose unless you are fasting because if you're fasting you don't want to exaggerate in sniffing the water in because it might actually go into your throat so you don't want to jeopardize your uh, your uh, your fast and again so what that means that in Ramadan you just do your wudu normally but don't exaggerate you do your rin the rinsing of the mouth and the nose normally but you do not exaggerate وعن عائشة رضي الله عنها قالت كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يدركه الفجر وهو جنب من أهله ثم يغتسل ويصوم متفق عليه collected by Bukhari and Muslim from Aisha رضي الله عنها she said Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Sometimes Fajr would fall The time of Fajr would start When the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Is in a state of Janaba uh, And this is what's called a Major physical impurity Which is when the person Basically approaches their wife uh, After an intimate relationship the, the person needs to make ghusl So sometimes Fajr would start And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Still ha had not performed his ghusl and then the Prophet ﷺ, after the time of Fajr has entered, would make ghusl and he would be fasting. So no harm. So a person can enter the day of fasting, the time of Fajr, in a state of Janaba. It does not affect the validity of the fast. وعن عائشة وأم سلمة رضي الله عنهما قالتا كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يصبح جنوبا من غير حلم ثم يصوم متفق عليه This collected also by Al-Bukhari and Muslim from Aisha رضي الله عنها and Umm Salama رضي الله عنها Both of them are the wives of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم They said that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم sometimes he would enter the time of Fajr while in a state of Janaba that he had not yet performed the uh, ghusl from Janaba and they said this Janaba would be from the Prophet ﷺ having an intimate uh, relationship or moments with one of his wives and again this shows that Janaba specifically is not a condition of being in a state of uh, uh, complete tahara is not a condition for the person to start their fast it's not a condition the person could be in a state of Janaba and they enter the fast but then obviously they have to make their ghusl in order to perform their fajr on time. Uh, so these are rulings that pertain to, um, to fasting. And again here this takes us to the, uh, the verse in Surah Al-Baqarah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it halal for the fasting person, a uh, man or a woman, to approach their spouse, to have an intimate relationship with their spouse during the night during the night during the day it's a major issue it's a major issue and there is a huge expiation and problem for that because it will be like a person has uh, on purpose uh, broken their fast and uh, the prophet وسلم, basically made a huge expiation for that that a person fasts 60 days in expiation for that so this is something that a person should be careful and this is why the prophet ﷺ recommended uh, those uh, especially the younger ones the ones who have a lot of physical strength and maybe a strong overwhelming sexual desire that they should not approach their wife even with a kiss 
during the day of Ramadan. Why? Because they don't want to jeopardize that. Because a person sometimes could get carried away with their desire where they lose control and they don't want to fall into something like this. So having an intimate relationship during the day of Ramadan is extremely serious. Extremely serious. So this is it uh, for today, inshallah ta'ala. And I hope you guys are doing well uh, during this fast. And I hope you guys are... Uh, enjoying Ramadan this year which is different and again I've been seeing some beautiful examples mashallah some people posted online beautiful examples where they have uh, made some sort of a masjid or a musalla at home and they are performing their salah they're praying with the family they're opening their fast with the family some some family members are actually giving each like talks short talks and reminders this is something great it's an opportunity so maybe this is something that we all can implement. Get some of your children or maybe yourself. They don't have maybe to prepare a five minute kind of reminder, a three minute kind of reminder. It doesn't have to be a big thing. Could be just narrating a couple of a hadith. They could actually just read the hadith from the book. It's something good and it's a good exp experience for the kids. Um, it's going to create beautiful memories, inshallah, for all of the family. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from all of us. Jazakumullah khayran. صلى الله وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه وسلم